Hello everyone, this is Ian. Welcome to my channel. I'm currently in quarantine in a local hotel, so I thought it might be fun to share some of my memorable past sexy encounters using the popular gay social app, Grindr. And in this video, I'm going to talk about my most dangerous Grindr hookup. Let's dive right into it, shall we? It was 2016 summer. I was in my 20s. I was young and free. I was still writing music at the time and I was invited to participate in a two-week music festival in Valencia, Spain. It was my first time visiting Spain. I was curious and excited. Spain is such a beautiful and exotic country. The food is great. Spanish people are beautiful, passionate and very, very friendly. One night, I went back to the hotel after dinner. I was, you know, in the mood. And of course, I was checking out the guys in the area on Grindr. And surely, I got some buzz from some guys and I was just browsing and browsing. I remember there was this particular faceless guy who has a toned and hairy body. I think at the time he was in his um, early 30s, if I remember correctly. There was something about our conversation that got me really intrigued. He did send a face pic and yeah, he was good looking and he was very tall, like 6'2". I don't even remember his name. So we decided to meet up for some fun. Now, at the time, I couldn't host because I was sharing a room with another participant from the music festival. And the grinder guy couldn't host either for some undisclosed reasons. So he said he would drive up to my hotel, pick me up, and we would figure out together once we meet up. Obviously, I was very excited, a bit naive because I didn't know anything about him. I then took shower, got myself prepared. I was waiting for him at the hotel driveway, nervous and excited. And I was definitely in the mood. Then a shiny silver car eventually pulled up on the hotel driveway. And there he was. I remember him being very handsome. He had a cool smile. And the way he spoke, I remember, was very subdued. There was definitely some pleasant small talks in the car. He was curious what I was doing in Spain, who I am, where I've been, etc. And he was telling me about Valencia. Now, at the time, I only had my phone and wallet with me. And I guess the conversation was so good, I didn't pay attention to where we were going. He said he had a place in mind that is very private and quiet. And I didn't know the city so much, so I just trusted him. And then I realized we were driving further and further out of the city. It wasn't on a highway. And it was just getting darker and darker with sporadic street lamps. There were big trees on both sides, so I couldn't figure out what was going on. And I started to panic because it was a very long drive and it was very dark. There were times I thought, well, if anything happened to me now, no one would know. He could have just murdered me right there and then and probably buried the body. I mean, not that he had any reason to like, why? But still, you know, stuff could happen. At some point, we made a turn and pulled up in a carpool in a bit of nowhere. So we got out of the car. It was still summer. It was still a bit warm at night with a little bit of a breeze. It was dark, so he held my hand and he just smiled and said, just follow me. I was like, okay, this is it. I might have to fight for my survival any moment now. And so I followed him. And strangely, we had to climb over a little bit of a sand dune. He did hold me close to him tight. And I still remember that intense, intoxicating, manly smell. Not body odor, but body smell. 
we climbed over the sand dune and we arrived in this long and beautiful beach. We could see a little bit of light from the city across the water on the other side. And there was breeze coming from the sea. While I was in his arm, he asked me to look up. And there it was, a starry night. It was absolutely breathtaking. He said we wouldn't be able to see stars in the city. So he took me to this beach that only locals would know. There was just us on the beach. He was holding me close with one arm and he pulled out his phone and opened this app that could identify constellations. So one by one, he showed me different star formations. I was completely mesmerized. I totally melted in his arms. Then in this beautiful setting, under the stars on the beach, with the comforting sea breeze on a summer night, he was slowly and gently rocking me from side to side. We went quiet for a little bit. Then he started to feel me up and stroke my back. And then expectantly, he started kissing me on the lips and whispered some Spanish words I don't even understand. I thought I was in heaven. I totally forgot about the danger of it all. He unbuttoned my shirt and he undid his. He pressed my body up against his while we were passionately kissing. It was like, wow, this guy knows what boys like. So we were fondling for a while and it felt great, absolutely. Then we became more and more bold. We both dropped our pants and were taking turns on our knees, if you know what I mean. I remember at some point under his breath, he grunted, bad boy, very, very bad boy. And then he turned me over to my back up against his chest, growling and uttering some Spanish words I don't know. He banded me over and we had some fornication right there and then. But that's not all. He then said, put up your pants. Let's go back to the car. I was like, did I do something wrong? Because we were not quite finished yet. I thought, well, you know, maybe he wanted to do it in the back seat of the car for a change. But I didn't question him. He was in charge. So he held my hand and we climbed over the sand dune once again back to the carpool. We walked back to the car. I tried to pull the door open, but it was still locked. Standing in front of the car, he said, come over here. And I did. Then, without saying a word, he lifted me up and threw me on the hood of the car. I probably made a dent, I don't know. So he pulled my pants up and lifted my legs in the air. And we did it right there and then in public. It was so bold because any vehicles could pull up at any moment. And I remember there were cars driving by on the main road next to the carpool occasionally. And then he finished me on the hood of the car. It was definitely like, wow, I never expected that. And he didn't drive me right back to the hotel. He actually gave me a tour of Valencia in his car. He was just driving me around in the late evening and showing me where I should go visit and where to eat. So sweet, so very sweet and nice. And at the end, he safely drove me back to the hotel and we went our separate ways. And I never heard from him ever again. It was just that one time, but it went from a potentially dangerous date to one of my most memorable encounters I've ever had on Grindr. So that's it. If you like my story in this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment below if you have similar experiences. And don't forget to check me out across social media platforms for more fun content. I'll share some of my other grinder stories if you're interested. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.